Alright, I want to talk about section 11.15, bar graphs. This section is going to be pretty quick and easy because a lot of us already know how to read bar graphs, or at least we should. But there's a couple things I want to talk about anyway. Um, bar graphs are a really good way to display data. So their purpose is to display data. And this allows us to draw conclusions from them that we might be able, that we might miss if it was just a list of numbers. Let's draw a quick bar graph and we're gonna be using um, this made up teacher's uh, English grades. So he gives us like this, so I'm gonna get an A, a B, C, D, and an F. And the this is the grade, and this is the number of students that earned that. And this is a little T chart that we can make. 15, 24, 33, 9, and 6. And what we'd like to do is I'd like to turn this into a bar graph. Okay, the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to determine my x and y dimensions. My x and my y. Now, typically down here on my x, this is where I'm going to list the um, reasons and words or the different things that I'm going to be looking at. So down here I'm going to put the grades. And on the y, what I usually do is I like to put my number. So on this, pers on this part, I'm going to put my number of students. So, I know Normally when I make a bar graph, I'm going to want to do it on graph paper. I'm, I'm going to be really accurate. But this is just kind of a rough one that I'm going to use. So I'm going to put my A's, my B's, my C's, my D's, and my F's. Now I need to decide the interval that I'm going to be looking at. The interval in this case... is the maximum to the minimum of displayed data. So from here, I really want to show, I can probably start at around zero, and I really want to go up to about 35 or so. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, nah, um, let's see, maybe uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, not quite, I probably should have planned out my interval a little bit better, um, I'll run it with 5s here, I'll change this to a 25, and I'll go up 2 more for some of my lines, so I'll do a 30, and a 35. And I should not have crowded them so much, but unfortunately I'm going to stick with it for now. So let's go with my, I'm going to use orange, I'm going to fill out my number of A's. My A goes up to 15, so I'm going to make a little bar graph that goes here up to 15. My B's goes up to 24, so I'm going to make my B go up to almost 25, but not quite. My C here is at 33, so it's going to go all the way up, almost to 35, a little bit past halfway. My D, I have 9. I'm going to go up to here. And my F, I have 6, which means I'm going to just barely pass the 5. And this allows me to see that the bulk of my grades are in C, as I expected, but I do have a couple of D's and F's, and a couple of A's as well. My spread is pretty good, and it allows me to look at my data much more clearly than I would have um, had I not done this. One other word that I want to mention is the scale of this graph. And the scale is the data between my two points. So are the, um, it's the number of data points between my markings. It's the uh, in this case, my scale is five because there's five between every tick.
All right, that's pretty much all there is. What you're going to be doing is you're going to do, do a little bit of reading a graph and the review of this section. And I don't anticipate it taking um, very long or being particularly difficult. All right, go ahead and go on.